today we are going to hear from ballerina from albania uh, to talk about uh, how software developers uh, in, can be part of the test uh, automation is it real is it possible so it's a very interesting topic and i am also looking forward to hear from her so let's uh, without any further delay i will give it to ballerina well uh, hello everyone um First of all, uh, I'd like to say that I'm very happy to be part of um, Agile India conference and I'm very enthusiastic to, to be part for the first time of this amazing community. Um, this presentation um, aims to uh, give a real life story of how a product team in our bank decided to experiment a new model of doing test automation with the software developers. But before jumping into the dynamics of uh, our work, uh, I would like first to introduce myself since I'm here for the first time. My name is Blerina Nazda. Uh, it's 15 years that I work in IT, uh, specifically in software development area. Um, I am a web technology solution lead in Raiffeisen Bank Albania in Tirana. And um, uh, in the last two years, um, I have taken also another role of IT delivery lead for retail lending products. Basically, uh, more than two years ago, our bank started this process of transformation from the st standard uh, structure to build more agility. And in this transformation, uh, it started to build a new culture and um, a new mindset of um, uh, working specifically or using new principles and, discipl and disciplines like agile and DevOps. So we have changed totally the way how we develop products. So from the traditional uh, way of uh, working with projects into creating a dedicated product teams with a shared vision and uh, with the work toward, you know, toward this, uh, this vision. And in, in the context of this transformation, yes, I have taken this new role and being in, in the role of IT delivery lead um, has given me the possibility to, to see things uh, in a more um, a wide uh, range. So not only in the development, but also, uh, for example, I've started to be an advocate of software quality and um, I have started to promote a lot continuous testing as a very critical part of this overall process of um, having uh, speed and quality in, in our deliverables. Everyone who want to reach me can, can do it via Twitter, email or, or LinkedIn. Uh, well, I believe that uh, we can all agree that when we talk about achieving agility in terms of specific product teams, but also in terms of more, you know, in a wide range, like organization level, uh, there are no shortcuts to achieve it. So basically, you can not just uh, cut specific activities of different processes in order to arrive at the final destination earlier. So it just doesn't work like that. And mostly um, in the agile way of working, uh, the necessity to have all the competences inside the team in order to do everything internally, it's, uh, it's really critical. So it's very necessary to do everything inside and to don't rely on any other piece of work that is done outside of the team or that is done in a silo. This is relevant also for the overall life cycle of uh, the software developments and specifically for activities that aims to embed quality in these deliverables. Um, today, there are a lot of researches around when uh, that are done for the so-called high performing teams. And besides many uh, findings, one very important one that I'd like to, to mention is that in high performing teams is seen a very strong relationship between the business success and the technical practices that these teams use in order to, to achieve it. Uh, when we talk about the two main pillars of development and testing in these teams is more and more is seen this, you know, blurring line between these two, um, these two activities. What does this mean? This means that uh, more and more uh, is seen that, for example, testing is a responsibility of everyone in the team. And more and more is seen that software developers also are, are taking a lot of responsibility when we talk about you know, building quality into, into our products. 
And uh, they are doing this not only through, you know, developer, uh, developer activities like building unit tests or um, integration tests, but also more and more they, um, they are being involved in uh, performing also end-to-end -end tests or automate regression tests, which we must say are a kind of tests that boosts even more the level of the confidence that, that the specific product team has at the end about the quality of, of, uh, of its features. So um, this kind of, let's say, uh, blurring or the necessity to have everyone involved in the activities of, of building quality of testing was seen even in our team. But first, uh, I would like to give you some more context to this specific product team in order to understand better later, you know, the dynamics and uh, our problem. Uh, our team was created at the end of 2019 as a cross-functional team with a product owner, a scrum master and a development team. And the vision of the team was to work in order to position uh, Raiffeisen Bank Albania as the best consumer lending in one touch point, to improve the customer experience on consumer lending, and to work in order to achieve two tangible, uh, let's say, KPIs, like the time for approval of a loan for 30 minutes, and also decreasing the work rate by the bank to 20%. Um, in the moment that the team was created in this agile setup, um, we immediately understood that in order to succeed and to accomplish uh, our vision, we needed to leave the full benefits of agile. So we needed to be an autonomous and full cycle team. We needed to own the product vision end to end. We needed to produce faster, to have better quality into our product and to increase our operational effectiveness. So uh, it was obvious for us that um, in our path of working, we would need to really build and uh, have these uh, necessary competencies in order to accomplish everything without depending on others not part of the team. Uh, I will give you some more context to the system that was in the center of, um, of the developments that the team needed to do in order to achieve the vision, because the overall lending process of the bank uh, is uh, automized and embedded in, in one uh, web application that is built with Angular as a front end, with backend uh, web API in .NET, with an SQL database, and it runs on Chrome. Uh, it is not a customer facing application, it is an internal application of the bank, but it is very critical because basically it embeds the overall process of lending of the bank uh, for our retail customers from the moment that the customer applies for, for a specific lending product to the different verifications that the system automizes about the personal data, credit history, calculation of indicators in order to prove the eligibility of the customer for a specific credit loan to the approval, the decision uh, taken automatically for the system, the preparation of the contracts and the disbursement of the loan in the core banking of, of our bank. Also, the system embeds a lot of other uh, after disbursement processes, which are uh, very important because they aim to, to work and to do automatically the maintenance of this um, credit products that our customer has. And we must say that the lending process is one of the main sources of the revenues for, for the banks in general. So um, doing um, the right developments, uh, adding the right functionalities uh, and embedding the right quality in the developments that we needed to do in order to achieve our vision was very, uh, very important. Oh, well, I remember that when we started to work in this agile setup, in the first sprint, we were working in the same way that we did before that we were in this setup. So uh, a user story was taken 
uh, from the backlog, the developments were done. After the developments were finished, uh, it was released in the UAT environment. Uh, our business colleagues, other stakeholders do uh, acceptance tests. And if everything was okay with the functionality as per acceptance criteria of the user story, it was released in production. But uh, if in the traditional way, so not, not agile, this kind of work uh, at some point um, made us to succeed because, you know, the phases of the software development life cycle uh, have been, uh, you know, divided and you basically had quite some time to do even development and even testing after development. Now, working with the gel setup in these short iterations of two weeks was basically evident that we were not able anymore to accomplish this kind of activities. So we were not able to uh, finish uh, our tests inside the sprint. And sometimes um, our features would last uh, two sprints or even more to be ready in order to be released in production. So. Um, if I could describe uh, the situation in a more detailed way, uh, basically, every time that a story was completed, all the previously one needed to be re-verified re because we needed to be sure that new developments have not regressed the existing functionalities of our landing application. But from sprint to sprint, the number of you know, user stories that needed to be re-verified was, was, uh, was increased from sprint to sprint. And the number, the total number of the user stories that needed to be regressed was, um, was quite big. So the team productivity was really suffering and uh, it was taking uh, a huge portion of our capacity. I have done an analysis of the first 10 sprints and uh, what we saw with other team members was basically that 48% of the team capacity was being spent basically on, on regression tests, manual regression tests. And it was obvious that it was a huge capacity spent on manual work and it was an effort that could be spent uh, better in other uh, you know, activities, more productive activities. Uh, to mention is that uh, during this phase, software developers were involved in doing developer tests like unit tests and um, some integration tests, mainly API tests. And even though they were taking care that in every code commit, our tests were, were you know, passed, uh, the quality that uh, was built in an isolated way was not guaranteed to be the same when all these pieces of work tested separately were integrated to form later uh, a full functionality of the system. So um, it was obvious that it's it's a, what was it was a really need to have you know cover even this this part of of our work. Well, um, generally, when you evidence a problem in a team and um, you find or identify a specific need. And in our case, the need was to reduce the manual work. And a way to reduce the manual work of our regression testing was basically to automate them. The most legitimate scenario is to, okay, we have a need, why not hire people that uh, specific specialized profiles that can help us to do this kind of activities. And this is totally normal, but in our case, um, it's very difficult to find uh, this kind of profile. So test automation engineers, um, the only specialized profiles in the market are the ones that are built by their organizations for their specific needs. So it's very difficult basically to, to take them from their organization and to hire you know, in your organization. So uh, yes, we have quite, um, a great, you know, restriction, but we were determined to don't let this restriction holding us back toward improving our work. So it was obvious that uh, in order to, to, to do, to tackle this problem, uh, we needed to do on our own. So we needed to do in our team and 
it was obvious that we needed to upskill our software developers with the necessary skills in order to uh, to do also activities that were related with the automation of uh, our regression tests. Uh, I must say that uh, when we have this idea, there were quite some some reasons that let's say we're supporting you know our idea and maybe the success of our idea first of all developers are awesome at programming so why not involve them to develop also end-to-end -end tests developers are already professional when we talk about the functionalities of the system because they they are building it and they really can help to to provide real tips in risk analysis Developers, um, it's true that they are missing, you know, that part of the tester mindset, but why not help them to learn? Why not coach them in order to, uh, to succeed even in that part? And talking about uh, agile, the agile will of working, talking about the agile team setup, it was obvious that um, it was a need that the test automation should be needed to be an integral part of our agile software development so inside the team and not let's say a separated process done outside or or in silo well um let's say that in in a general analysis that we have done we had quite um uh, criteria let's say that uh, were were supporting us but the most important thing was that we needed to talk with software developers because Yes, we needed to have them on board. They were the main actors, basically, of this, our idea. And uh, without them, we couldn't succeed. So uh, I talked with them. In the beginning, there was this concern of how uh, this kind of new skills would change their profile. Would they still be software developers or would they change uh, into, into test engineers, for example? Uh, we have explained this, we have clarified this. Uh, the idea was not to change their profile unless someone at the end would like so much uh, this kind of activities that would like itself to be a test engineer. But the idea was basically to, to start and to think that we can all contribute uh, when we talk about building and embedding quality in our product. Um, the idea was to start and to think in building a more T-shaping profiles for, for our developers in order to don't have only one specialized expertise, but also to have other skills like, for example, in, in testing, in test automation, or um, in yeah, other, like for example, DevOps skills, which are also very important for, for the development when we talk about the process of um, yeah, committing, building, uh, et cetera. Um, I must admit that we have been really lucky because our software developers uh, have been very open-minded. They accepted to be part of this process of uh, upskilling and, yeah, trying, experimenting this model to see what we will get at the end, because this was something new. But they had one request, and their request was, was totally legitimate. They said, okay, let's try to do this, but please, uh, let's try to create a good developer experience in test automation. Let's try to break a little bit this perception of um, uh, activities like frustrating or boring. And let's try to, to have fun in, in test automation. And in fact, uh, their request, we will see later, that was taken in consideration in the moment that we have defined the how of our test strategy. So choosing the tools that basically would support us to, to, to write the tests and to automate them. So uh, having identified the problem, uh, having uh, discussed and agreed the solution, we were now uh, in a situation that we needed to execute it. We needed to do something about it. So we have in front of the real challenge and the real challenge that we had was basically these two perspectives from one side, the developer perspective and from the other side, the tester perspective. Um, 
regarding the developer perspective, we were, let's say, quite, uh, we were feeling good because uh, our developers, uh, you know, with the skills that they have as, as software developers, were able to think over the architecture of the system and to also the, the, the necessary mechanism for launching them, like, continuous integration pipelines. They were quite good uh, in writing code because they had um, some years experience as software developers. And um, it's important to, to mention that uh, at the end, test automation is software developers. So the idea is that uh, the auto tests that we are going to, to develop are the same development product as the product that they are designed to. So uh, this was, let's say, quite a good a good advantage in, in our in our uh, perspective. From the other side, um, the tester uh, perspective was something new for us, and here uh, we had to work a lot because uh, we needed to to learn as software developers at the end. What is software testing? What is a testing methodology? We needed to learn how to know and identify you know, weaknesses of the product. We needed to know how to read a test case or how even to reanalyze a test case in order to automate it in the right way. So this kind of uh, a tester mindset was something new that we needed to learn a lot. For this reason, we have started and we still have ongoing this process of um, upskilling in tester perspective for our software developers. This is a process that uh, is part of our um, employee development program, uh, also in association with, uh, let's say, a much wider program that aims to T-shape uh, our developers with the necessary skills in order to, to be able to accomplish as much as possible inside the, the product teams. And um, also, I think that um, this is a process that uh, will be for sure and will stay for long because it helps even the organization to keep track, you know, of the evolving skills demand that the organization has from, from year to year. Currently, uh, we are working with two ways or two methods of learning. One, we call it the self-open learning, where um, our uh, developers uh, use this online skills development sites, but also, um, let's say, approaches like pairing with an expert uh, or software developers that is more expert in testing and test automation. And the other approach is the one uh, which we call curated learning because they are dedicated academies that are built, created from Raiffeisen Bank International in Vienna because Raiffeisen Bank Albania is part of the group of Raiffeisen Bank International. And our developers participate in this intensive three months programs where um, they can learn about specific, let's say, areas of test automation, like for web application or API or mobile. So depending on the specific needs that, is, that, a product teams, uh, that the product team may have. Well, um, so we had a problem. We identified the solution. Um, we have started a process of, uh, let's say, uh, upskilling because uh, in the moment that we were doing uh, some activities from uh, profiles that were not, let's say, dedicated or knowledgeable about it, a learning process was, uh, was necessary and it's still necessary to, to, to continue. But uh, from the other side, it was very important for us to have um, a test strategy. Uh, we were very determined to don't do automation just for the sake of um, you know, uh, having uh, coverage or for the sake of covering every corner of the application with automation. Our scope was to basically solve our problem. And our problem was uh, a high percentage of effort spent of, on, on manual work, so uh, a low productivity. So we, we wanted to document our approach of um, 
how we are we are going to do this this kind of uh, test automation it was very important for us to to document it uh, and to have it communicated to our stakeholders in order to have um, a shared understanding about it. And of course, in order to have support in the implementation of it from, from our stakeholders, from our product owner, from our, from our uh, board of management. But uh, yes, we were software developers. None of us was, let's say, um, an expert when it comes to building, you know, templates of test strategy. Uh, so we thought, okay, let's try to build a test strategy. Uh, I called it in a lighter approach in the form of the checklist uh, that was built based on a method that is called the Kipling method. The Kipling method is a well-known method that uses um, six questions. Uh, very short questions uh, that aims to trigger ideas in order to solve specific problems. Uh, it is not a method related with a specific kind of uh, problems. You can use it for everything. In this, in our situation, we have used it for for our problem of uh, uh, yes, uh, defining a test strategy. So our test strategy is um, today is result of you know answering to these five questions. Why should we do test automation? What are we going to use automation for? Where is our application that we need to do test automation? When are we going to write and run test automation? Who is going to write the automation? And how are we going to implement at the end these tests? The first thing that uh, we decided to, to do and to add in our test automation strategy was to define the why. And um, the why is, uh, is very important because uh, here, uh, the way how you respond to this question is basically or defines basically, you know, uh, the level of support that you will get, you know, from the stakeholders and from the product owner in order to, to implement it. Here is very important to define the why um, in terms of what business value, what business outcomes will give us uh, doing test automation. Because at the end, we need to, to underline that the final scope is not the automation. The final scope is to do automation because at the end, we will get some values that in our case was related with decreasing uh, the percentage of effort that we, we were spending on manual work. And uh, in our case, this uh, would have meant that we would be able to reduce a lot uh, our cycle time for changes and we would be able to increase our deployment frequency. So having defined the why of our test strategies in terms of business value, it was important to define what are we going to automate. And in our case, um, as I have described till now, our pain point was the regression part that, that was, um, was taking you know, a lot of efforts in the team. So it was obvious that we are going to do to automate regression tests, but how much of them? Because uh, yeah, the scope was not to automate everything. The scope for us was to be able to identify which are the test cases that are most valuable that will bring us, uh, you know, an immediate uh, decrease, you know, of the effort spent from, from, from our stakeholders. For this reason, um, we have used the Graham model, which is a model created from Dorothy Graham, a well-known and a pioneer in testing. This is a model to define what to automate. And it uses five criteria, which are the gut feel, the customer risk, value of test, cost of efficiency, and history. For each test case, it gives a score from one to five. And this is an activity that is done uh, for, from all the team, from all the team members. At the end, uh, you get a final score for each test case based on this criteria. And uh, based on the three uh, bands, uh, only those with a score uh, upper than 65 
are basically identified the most valuable, the most valuable test cases that you need to focus on. So with this model, we were able to identify exactly what uh, we needed to automate in order to get to get uh, the greater value. So from 65 um, total test cases uh, identified from the team, we have found that 35 of them was the most valuable. So our focus in the test strategy were this uh, 35 uh, test cases. Another uh, part of our test strategy uh, was also uh, the answer of the question, where is our, is our application that we need to automate? Uh, here is important that we have um, a description of our um, system under test, of its architecture, of its main characteristics regarding hardware, software, and different integrating components. And uh, it's also important to have a description of um, two main important uh, attributes that are related with testability, the testability of the application and the automatability of the application. So uh, it's very important to have um, a description of how easy it is uh, for the application, for example, to, um, to create uh, an initial state, how observable is the application behavior, how is easy how easy is to get uh, the current state of the application how easy is to diagnose uh, something in the application when 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 something is different or not not accepted and so it's very important to have um, a description of uh, how uh, let's say the user uh, the user interface element are developed how they can be uh, identified in a unique way and it's important also to have a description even of the integration components because they are very important when we talk about automating uh, the business logic. From the other side, uh, uh, the next uh, part of our test strategy was to define um, when to do uh, our, um, our automation. Um, I want to mention here that we were software developers. Our uh, efforts or allocation that we were uh, able to spend on test automation was a percentage of the total efforts because um, we have worked, let's say, with two uh, scenarios. One was uh, working with a 30% allocation on test automation and uh, the other part, the other percentage on developing features. And another scenario that we have used is to work uh, with rotation. So in one sprint, for example, one developer will work only as a test automation engineer. And in the other sprint, he would be a software developer and the other will be a test automation engineer. These were both scenario that, um, let's say we have seen to be to be good the second one is better because it, it gives you more possibility to have real deliverables in the sprint but it was very important for us to have a constant progress when we talk about automation it was very important to have uh, in every sprint um, a real work done about the automation. For this reason, we have put a test automation as part of the definition of done of our user stories, because only doing this, we, we would be able to, you know, to have discipline in, this, in these activities that were new and to have that, that constant uh, and incremental, let's say, um, output. But from the other side, uh, we need to consider that um, doing automation in short iterations, like two weeks, it's difficult. So it's difficult to do good automation in such a short time. For this reason, uh, in order from the other side to have real outcomes, because this is even the essence of, of working with sprints in Agile, we uh, have worked, let's say, I call it, we automated strategically. What does this mean? This means that we have done um, a reanalyze of the test cases that our uh, business stakeholders has provided to us. 
And uh, in many situations, we have done um, a split of these test cases into smaller parts in order to be able to, to accomplish it inside this, the sprint. And many times uh, with these test cases, we have decided and taken decisions like, for example, to move specific parts of the test case uh, from the UI testing level into lower levels of the test pyramid. Like for example, if we had a specific business logic that was tested from the end user in the application, when we automated the test case, we decided to move the test of the business logic um, in the API testing level and leave in the UI test level only, you know, the verification of, for example, the final results with the necessary assertions. Um, I believe from our experience till now, this is quite a good approach because um, when you have a test case, you have it from the perspective of a human doing uh, the tests. But then when you automate it, it will be done from the computer. So many parts that are done from the human can be basically uh, distributed in other levels of the test pyramid, like the integration part, or even in the unit test level. Um, well, after defining uh, the first questions of our test strategy, so the why, uh, the what, the when, the where, uh, the answer of the question how, how are we going to do automation comes, comes naturally. In our case, um, considering that uh, software developers were involved in these activities, uh, it was very important to, for us to find a tool that was appealing for, for them. Uh, and uh, we wanted basically to find a tool that uh, would make them feel the same experience when writing tests, just like when developing software. And regarding this, uh, our needs as software developers with uh, the tool were, uh, were some. So we wanted a tool that was you know, uh, easy to install with minimum co configurations. We wanted a tool completely modular with everything bundled in it because we don't want it to spend time in installing dependencies, for example. We wanted to have a tool that uh, had testing capabilities in the UI, but also headless mode because we wanted to run our tests with the continuous integration pipelines. Uh, of course, it, it needs to be had to have uh, quite a good documentation because we were learning and doing, and the documentation is really necessary in these situations. Uh, being software developers and debugging quite a lot. Uh, it would have been nice to have also a tool with debugging capabilities. And of course, we were looking for, for an open source tool and we were not looking for any, any commercial one. So having this criteria, let's say, for the how of our test strategy, we have done some researches and also worked with some proof of concepts uh, with these tools uh, in order to see their real capacities. And at the end, we decided to go with uh, Cypress. Cypress was our uh, tool that we chose to do basically the automation. It fulfilled, let's say, our uh, requirements. And we saw that also it has quite a good non-functional requirements fulfilled, like for example, uh, it had quite a rapid growth in popularity and it is quite a sustainable open source with a dedicated team that works every day for its improvement and for the further development of the roadmap and new uh, capabilities of, uh, of the tool. And also we saw that it was really very good rated, even um, the ThoughtWorks technology rather has rated Cyprus as the top tool to be adopted compared with uh, others like, for example, Papatier or, or Test Cafe. And of course, for us as web developers, which have, you know, in the backbone, for example, JavaScript, was quite easy to, uh, to adopt with this tool, to learn it and to master it quite good uh, in, in the technical perspective. Well, um, I will... a quick, quick time check, you have five more minutes. Okay. 
so uh, I will not stop to, 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 to tell anything about Cyprus because it's not uh, the presentation doesn't aim to do this. But from the perspective of the software developer, I would like to say that um, this tool has quite a lot of features that developers love, like, for example, um, it is uh, it is modular tool. Basically, it has everything bundled and you don't have to think of any dependencies because it has everything bundled it in. Um, it is. Um, it gives you a very good experience as a developer in testing because it has a very nice and practical user interface because maybe based on its architecture, it gives you the possibility to have in the same run loop in the browser, the application that you are testing and from the other side in another uh, frame, the specifics on the tests with the... Uh, with the details of the assertion and everything that is going under the hood, uh, uh, let's say not related with the specific assertions that you are doing for the application. Uh, it has this great capability, you know, to debug. You can debug in it. And <laughs> to be honest, not every tool gives you the possibility to debug your code in testing. It has this time travel in order to see uh, what is going on with the previous test run or those that are that will be run after. And you have this capability also to have uh, videos for your test run, which we are now using as part of our test summary report that we are sending to our stakeholders where they can really see how the test is running. And you have also uh, screenshots about the errors that are, are happening in, in your tests. Um, a very important part of our test strategy was also to define where, uh, when are we going to, to execute our tests, because it's not worth to have uh, a test automated and to don't run it. At the end, uh, the primary scope of automation is to basically have the possibility to run them in every part of your uh, software development lifecycle in order to get uh, quick and fast feedback about the quality and to take take immediately and fast the necessary measurements in order to fix a specific problem. For this reason, we have built the necessary pipelines. Since we are Microsoft stack, we are working with Azure DevOps, but it can be in any, in any other technology. So we have one pipeline where we are running our smoke tests and another one dedicated to run the whole suite, which is, let's say, um, a nightly build for our test, uh, test suite. Um, I can say that with um, the help of our software developers, we are now, uh, you know, in, in this mode of continuous testing. So we have created this capability of continuous testings because we are now able to, to to run our tests automatically for every environment and every uh, phase of our software developments and have, yes, a clear view of uh, what is going on with the quality of our application. Um, part of, of the process is for sure reporting and monitoring because uh, our stakeholders um, need to have a transparent uh, overview of what is going on with the quality of the application. And for this reason, the necessary reportings uh, with the necessary videos of the tests run for them uh, is, uh, is sent every day. And I must say that um, these are numbers that, they're, that they are, are very good, you know, uh, uh, evaluated from them and they really see uh, in everyday basis uh, what is going on with the quality of the application. Um, at the end, uh, I can say that we have we have 10 months now that are working in this model. And uh, of course, challenges are a lot, but I think that challenges are part of our work, even if we are not going to do this, this specific thing of, of, but we are going to do other activities. Uh, but important to measure is that uh, we have, uh, we have had very good results and currently we have seen very good improvement in our in our, in our agile engineering kpis which uh, has result has resulted in very good you know increase of our business agility for the team 
concurrently, we have had a very good improvement of our deployment frequency from twice per month uh, to once a week. Our cycle time for change has uh, decreased from 20 days to seven days. Now we have a set of regression tests automated because before everything was done manually. And uh, the efforts spent of manual work in the beginning, if you remember, were 48%, well now are decreasing 15%. We aimed to, to decrease it, um, yes, even more. But the final thoughts. Um, our experience has shown us that software developers are very good to do test automation, but we have to support them to learn. If you support them to learn, they can really be um, quality advocates. And you know, having software developers that are quality advocates is a huge benefit for the organization in terms of speed and uh, yeah, high levels of quality for our deliverables. Thank you very much. I hope that the presentation have served someone for maybe the same situation or, or not. Thank you, Berlina. Um, so now since the time is out, uh, we may not be able to take questions. Oh, uh, I would say, yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the session was very, very informative you. and uh, I would, we would go and explore some of those techniques that you mentioned.